Welcome to Cars on Call. I am gastroenterologist and automotive journalist Steve Schutz. I'm here with trauma surgeon Stefan Moran and automotive expert, uh, connoisseur collector and marketing expert Adams. And that's going to be important a little bit later. We're going to talk about marketing brands, branding, which is right up your alley, Adams. This is your career. And we're going to talk safety, of course, with our trauma surgeon. One thing that differentiates this show is we have a trauma surgeon who could talk about car safety. Most people talk about car safety, really don't know what the heck they're talking about. Uh, Stefan does. And we're going to talk Toyota Century, believe it or not. We're going to talk Daniel Mack. We're going to talk safety. We're going to talk a little GM and Mary Barra. Uh, Stefan, you received a picture from a fan or a, a listener. You want to talk about that. So uh, we're going to talk about Remember automotive. It's a family show. Yeah, automotive. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> automotive. Uh, uh, cars that we think are cool and not cool so let's get into it uh wall street journal just a couple of days ago said toyota will make the next century and it's gonna it's a car if you don't know it's a jdm car japanese domestic domestic market car it's a very very nice car top of the food chain really in japan uh it's going to be an suv stefan you have some thoughts yeah, I think, you know, this century, listen, I, I just brought a picture up. You can pull it up on the internet. It looks like a giant wannabe Rolls Royce Cullinan. They're going to sell tons of these things in their home market. It used I to think be a that, sedan. It used to, exactly. It used to be a sedan. And now it, it's just this giant SUV platform. And it looks like the Rolls Royce Cullinan. They're going to sell tons of these. There's a real market, not I should say, there's a defined market for these in Asia, including China. Um, all the emerging countries, they're going to sell a ton of these. It's a known brand. It comes in probably around 150K versus a 355 minimum entry price for Rolls Royce Cullinan. They're going to sell a lot of these. And um, they even have a model here. I just pulled up another picture where you can get optional sliding doors on the rear, which kind of looks like uh, it makes it look funny sliding those doors open, but it sure would make it a lot easier to get in and out of for executives. I think it's a fabulous idea on their part. And you think about it, the number one, you know, selling luxury executive vehicles, probably the Range Rover, the full on Range Rover. That's what people are buying instead of S-Class Mercedes. Right in line with that. S-Class Mercedes, Range Rover, the Century, and then big dollar calling in. I like it. Adams, you're shaking your head. <laughs> you don't like it. It's it's a lot to take in at once because, you know, we, we think about Toyota back in the day, you know, they were very derivative, very much the copycat, you know, not the innovators. And then they became the innovators, not the imitators. And here what we have looks wise, you know, I tend to harken back to the stylistic aspects. It's like a, a Cullinan with cheap bifocals on. Go to that front picture again. I mean, it, it makes me. It's like those dolls, you know, that that you'd lift up and their eyes would open and then they would shut and they're open and then they shut. It's just like a little bit of an optical illusion there. And that C pillar is entirely Cullinan. I mean, even the silhouette, I, I'd be curious if you if you could trace that silhouette and then you trace to Cullinan, it, it would just be millimeters apart. However, yes, they will sell a ton of them. And I think we all know where the big fat land cruiser uh segment went it here it is you know we saw oh you know the big one is left and we're getting a slim down land cruiser well here's what was left over and it's grown up into this but um yay them i wish it wasn't so uh derivative and uh duplicative in its styling but it it'll it'll be a winner 406 horsepower 3.5 uh hybrid turbo motor probably lifted from the lexus but yeah it'll it'll, it'll be a good a good vehicle and people will buy it this yeah, was but... the the century sedan was the um top shelf sedan it, it the, the, in japan the toyota century means understated old money and it means corporate ceos and it means rich people the the uh the royalty over there understated rich money it looks not great. It drives incredibly well. It's been out since 1967. It's an incredible car. Wool upholstery, never leather. And it has like these doily curtains that hide you from uh, the the regular people. It is just this very distinctive Japanese thing. And now it looks like a cross between a Genesis SUV and a Rolls Royce Cullinan. Ah, it lost its distinctiveness. 
Yeah, they're going to sell me. But the Cullinan, to me, I love, you know, we've talked about it before in the show. I love the Cullinan. Think about it. V12, 592 horsepower, 355,000 base price. It's got electric tow hitch that swings up and down out of the back, can pull 6,000 pounds, <laughs> you know, to get out. Oh, but not How in the U.S. without one? How can you live without it? But, you know, and I love what they stated about the, the new black badge. They call it the utilitarian side of fashion unleashed with black badge Cullinan. Rolls-Royce's luxury SUV combines subversive runway glamour with the mastery of bespoke. I mean, but I, you know, it's funny. Hey, you know, give that copywriter a raise. Hey, I love listen, it. here's the bottom line, and we're going to talk about branding later. Here's my brand yeah. message for the century, and now it changes because it's going to be another damn knockoff of a Bentley Bentayga or a Cullinan, but the century has always been old Japanese money, and the Cullinan is... I don't care where you're from. This is complete new money, gauche, uh, avant. What is it? Uh, nouveau riche. Well, yeah, well it is. If the, so, if the dude gets out of a Conan <laughs> wearing a tracksuit, that's a Russian gangster. Okay. If the dude gets out and his hat sideways and he's got chains, that's the rapper dude. If the guy gets out and he's got an entourage of paramilitary, scary ass dudes, that's an international weapons dealer. But hey, if the corgi gets out first, that's old money. But but you know, but then again, if it's a McMansion and with the driveway, and she's blonde with aftermarket parts, it ain't no calling in. That's an Escalade <laughs> <laughs> or a G wagon <laughs> or a G wagon. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. We, I think we just had our branding discussion. That's pretty <laughs> yeah. strong, right? Well, there. I wanted to I wanted to intro the branding <laughs> discussion because talking about the century, right? But we talked about it earlier that you know the reason that it. Um, the English royalty, there are no leather seats in all in their their high end right. rolls, because leather was used on upholstery on for the people that rode the wagons outside, the coach drivers that were on the original single phaetons outside, because the the rain wouldn't ruin the leather, whereas rain would ruin the wool or the mohair or whatever upholstery they had. So super high end money, you're not going to find typically. You're not they don't want leather in the back. Yeah, so. Uh, speaking of Nouveau, nouveau Riche, uh, I want to talk a little bit about Daniel Mack. So Daniel Mack, I think, is one of the most important people in the whole automotive world. He got a very high level uh, Apple executive fired because he said something intemperate. But Daniel Mack is a guy who comes up to people and goes, hey, man, I love your car. What do you do for a living? And that's his thing. And people know him. They love him. He's on TikTok. He's on, all, he's on YouTube, but he's mostly on TikTok. I think he's totally cool. He disarms people. He's funny. People uh, relate to him. Uh, he, am I the only one in this group that loves Daniel Mack? Are you the only one that watches TikTok? <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I love TikTok. We, I know you do. We do. And I'm trying to pull up. I'm trying to pull him up. You sent it to me. He. Um, he uh, he's a, up at, I, I need to watch him more because you're right. He. Um, all right, Adams, hey. this guy has made a brand for himself. He went up to Horatio Pagani at the Pebble Beach show just a couple weeks ago. Didn't know who he was, which is kind of funny. But he did know who Stefan Winkleman was, uh, CEO of uh, so the Pagani, of course, CEO of Pagani. Uh, but Stefan Winkleman is the CEO of uh, Lamborghini. And and he Stefan Winkleman from Lamborghini laid out the red carpet for Daniel Mack because he knows he – matters it's it's i think it's a phenomenon i think it's fun i love it i do like that yeah spont it's spontaneity which might get you in the trouble <laughs> no and, and, and look what he's look look what he's done you know you know pr prior to the whole world of, of uh social media marketing he would never have been able to have a, a television show that that did that but look he's basically got a television show and or a, a miniature network that does this based on one question. And I think it's, I think there's a lot of genius in that. And clearly he has followers and he can monetize that. He can make a living doing it. It's got to be a fun lifestyle. And it's, it's, it's one of the, it, it's kind of a dream job in a way. I mean, especially for a car dude. We are all a little bit voyeuristic. And I think every time before Danny Mack came along, we looked at someone in a really nice car, like a Rolls Royce or a Bentley or a Ferrari. And, thought, gee, I wonder what that person does for a living. He yeah. actually asks. So yes, there's people who said I made it real estate. Yes, I did it in tech. Uh, but I saw one just a couple of days ago. 
It was very good looking, very young blonde. She couldn't have been older than about 22. And she said, uh, I'm on social media. And her boyfriend said she doesn't have followers. She has subscribers. And she was driving a Bentley. <laughs> so she's probably only fans. It's, it opens your eyes to a whole bunch of worlds. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, there's Stefan Winkleman there. Oh, there he is. Yeah, yeah. All right. So uh, not too much to say about Daniel Mack, but I agree, Adams. That would be really cool to be Daniel Mack for a couple of days. Well, you know, uh, before you move on, I did not know that was his name. And forgive me that I was the uneducated on that. But I have come across a few of his shorts where he does that. And the interesting thing is a lot of people who've made it don't get asked that question a lot that people like assume they know who they right. are they, or they have this sort of star quality that they're unapproachable. And for the dude just to walk up and say, hey, nice car, what do you do? I don't know. Like you said, it's disarming and it's and it's a it's a wonderful lead in. And I'm I'm going to start following. I will be a fan after this show. Is he on Instagram or just TikTok? Uh, Yeah, I think just TikTok. I don't think he's okay. on Instagram. I so, can't do um, TikTok, but. And uh, uh, Stefan, before we move to safety, uh, a, a, a listener, a friend of the show, a friend of mine, uh, sent in a license plate. So you can talk about that. This is Mary Parsons, who's a great listener, a great friend, great person. Uh, describe this, Stefan. Yeah. So, I, you know, I had my first um, episode of Fandom at Carl's wedding. Um, I got That's to my meet son. Mary Parsons. Yeah, Steve's son. And Mary Parsons was at the wedding along with her husband, Dr. Parsons. And she came up and said she loved the show and loved me. And she sent us a picture. And I don't know where this is, but she's standing in front of a old, beautiful Pinto. And that was a New York plate that says explodes. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think that is that is hysterical. For you long, young listeners, Ford came out with the Pinto and they put the gas tank in the back. And when they got rear-ended, the cars tended to explode and catch far. So, um, <laughs> far. <laughs> catch far. You want to translate and, that Alabama <laughs> version of far? Fire and it's fire to a lot of other people. <laughs> well, you know, I had a patient that I, I've told the story before. I had the patient that came in the middle of winter and he wasn't wearing a shirt and he was bright red, no hair, no eyelashes. And the, the stupid little intern said, So, what brings you in today, Mr. Smith? He says, Well, hell, Doc, can't you tell? Caught far, caught far. <laughs> yeah, he was smoking with his oxygen on and uh, he caught far, smoking Boom. with his with oxygen, oxygen on. Yes, yes. So thank you, Mary Parsons. <laughs> Listeners, if you get a great pick, send us out. We'll give you a shout out. And Mary, uh, thanks for being such an avid listener. And we really, pre we really appreciate it. And Mary, your smile makes that photo because clearly you get the joke. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Uh, the safety or you have something before that? I don't know. I do have safety. Let me figure out. I got to stop the screen share here. I can't figure out how to do that. Oh, there's a stop share. I do have. Um, so I read an interesting article. And um, let me find it here so I can quote him. We got lots of pictures. Sorry, fans. We got lots of pictures today and stuff to talk about. Um, heavy graphic heavy, content. Heavy graphic content. And I'm like trying to talk. Um, so this was a great article by, if I pronounce your name, I'm sorry, Marina Bolotnikova on August uh, 25th, 2023 on Vox. And um, she was kind of saying, hey, what's up here? You know, we've got, America has the world's safest air travel, but we suck so bad at car safety. That's her title. America has the world's safest air travel, but sucks so bad at car safety. And I'm like, I am like, amen, Mar Mar Marina. I have been preaching this on the show um, that we, you know, what the hell's going wrong in this country? So she brings up some numbers. And um, it's just kind of a recap of what we've talked about, but I'm glad She's getting some press on this and she brought it up. So basically in the last two, the last um, 10 years, there have been two passengers killed in accidents on U.S. commercial airlines. During that 10 years, 365,000 Americans have been killed. And um, so New York Times did an investigation. They detailed the lapse where there's um, a lot of oversight um, about flights that have had some near crashes several times the last week you may see in the news so there's been an increased frequency and some near misses on the runways but it kind of brings you to the fact we start to thinking about how do they how has our government regulated air traffic versus motor vehicle traffic and it's in highly regulated 
And one of the big things that's interesting to think about it that she brings up that we as a society expect absolute safety in plane travel. And these are my own words, but we really don't give a shit about it in the car. Okay. It's just the way it is. It's American freedom. Carry a weapon. I drive my car where I want. I pay where I want gas. I can drive as big of vehicles I want. I don't care about other people. But no, but when it comes to an airplane, any loss of life is a never event. We call that never events in medicine. There shouldn't be some things that ever happen, like your surgeon leaving an instrument in your belly. That's like a never event that shouldn't happen, or cutting off your left leg when he meant to cut off your right leg. Um, but we become complacent in America, as well as our regulation and our government has been very complacent in addressing the fact about how many people we die. I've talked about this, you know, walking as a pedestrian, 7,508 pedestrians were killed last year, the highest number since 1981. But does it make the news? It makes the news on occasion, but people don't get excited about it. There's no national outroar to do something about it. Whereas if a plane were to go down, Oh, people would be going crazy. Every time a plane goes down, people go crazy about it. What causes the plane to crash? Blah, blah, blah. But we don't really get excited about the 40,000 and more people that are killed in cars every year. So we have a risk of car crash death in America that's three times higher than Canadians and Australians, five times higher than the Brits and the Germans, and nine times higher than Norwegians. We kill more people than homicides and suicides combined. Um, it doesn't make the news. People really, they don't get excited about it. Um, so, you know, they talk about this and, you know, we've got uniformed professionals flying our airplanes. They go through a lot of scrutiny. The pilots do. And public trust is very high in the aviation industry. You know, but you got 200 million plus drivers and cars. We have a country and a society just been complacent. We've fallen behind other developed nations in following this trend and doing something about it. But think about it. We we know how to make a plane going 500 miles an hour not fall out of the sky, not have engines blow apart the thing falls out of the sky, not have pilots crash into the ground all the time. But we have done nothing about our urban geography, our roads on our highways. And, um, you know, safety is it's a systemic responsibility. And there's that safety regime in the air with built-in redundancies, but we don't have it. We don't have it in our cars. Um, and what's really also happened is media coverage, government coverage has brought up the idea that the vast majority of these crashes are caused by human error. And everyone is overlooking. I've talked about it, this, that we have fundamentally unsafe roads. And I came across in this article, something new I'd not talk, heard the term before, um, they call them strodes, S-T-R-O-A-D-S. That's think about it. It's a wide lane road with high speeds greater than 25 miles an hour with a lot of turns, a lot of traffic lights. We got them all over our cities. You're sharing these strodes with cars, pedestrians, bicycles. And think about all these conflict points. There's going to be a lot of deaths. And I talked about when I drove in France and I drove in Ireland. The EU and Europe has what they call traffic calming zones. They narrow the roads, they put in roundabouts, they put in speed humps, they do everything to keep the other people safe and slow down drivers. But in America, we don't want any part of that. And then the second part of America, is, I talked about it last week, is a rapid takeover of big cars, SUVs and pickup trucks. I talked about how the increase in passenger vehicle deaths now because of the change on the roads of more SUVs. And the only place in the country, you know, taxation without representation, Washington, D.C. does have a tax on oversized cars. Um, maybe that's what it takes. You know, Americans, you hit the pocketbook, they start to learn. But, you know, we have this learned helplessness in America about gun violence. And we have the same thing when it comes to traffic violence. And I like that term traffic violence. And it's time to start rethinking about our roads, our highways, our behavior on our roads, because as a developed nation, the greatest nation in, in the entire world, to think how we have fallen so far behind in traffic safety, people dying, pedestrians dying, it's, it's, it's inexcusable. So great article. I like the way she compared, compared automotive safety issues to the aviation industry. 
I think there's a lot of lessons to be learned. But, you know, um, whether our politicians and regulators do anything, zero expectation on my part. But I think it's going to take a grassroots kind of effort for people to stand up and say, hey, you know, something's got to change here. Well, Steph, it's people like you with the voice and the authority and the knowledge and certainly the, you know, just go go, go right to the to the, the side of your, your operating table. I mean, you see what happens when people make terrible decisions. And I think part of it, um, and I don't know if Marina goes into this, but it's just driver training. You know, we're so dang serve me oriented in this country. We want, you know, airbags and ABS brakes and lane warning uh, lane divider warnings. We want every version of driver assist. We want, you know, intelligent cruise control. Why don't we just train people to drive better? I guarantee you the five time uh, multiple that they're looking at of uh, deaths here versus in Europe. Those people drive faster, probably on average on the highway than we do considerably faster. But you know what? They know how to use the left lane. They know how to use blinkers. They understand how to actually decelerate when they see a group of people up ahead accelerate instead of trying to get around them. I feel like it's driver training, and I know I sound like the old man of the group, but freaking learn something. Driving is a privilege. It is not a right. You don't just like wake up when you're 16 and say, give me your license. But it's almost that. You can dang to get a driver's license on Amazon, and we're close enough to that. It'll probably happen in our lifetime. People need to learn how to drive. They are piloting five up to 10,000 pound, 500 horsepower missiles on the road learn how to control it so they absolutely adam um and i think you know i don't foresee a lot of regulatory change in this country i'm not a big fan of autonomous driving where we are today but i think in the future i think that will help with lives being saved autonomous driving because we're not going to change driver behavior and i think for listeners um i think one of the clearest things you can understand about about the state of drivers in america Go down the interstate, you'll see somebody changing on the t- a tire on the right side, a broken down car. How many people get into the left hand lane? I bet or three, there's a mower. Watch three, how many people will yeah. move over a lane. It, I cannot believe the people that don't move. They're going 80 miles an hour, five feet from another vehicle. I do it all the time. Yeah, uh, I, I will also. Oh, you don't point get out, over? No, no, I do it all the time. I, I move yeah, over, I of course. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Uh, same, yeah. for, same for cyclists. I move way yes. over for oh, cyclists. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, I will say one thing. It's uh, I think this is true, Stefan. I think that of those two fatalities, one was a uh, a girl who was a victim of a it's an Asiana uh, Chinese airline crash in San Francisco. And the only fatality came because she was run over by right. an emergency truck. But they counted it as uh, from a, an aircraft death, even though she was run over by a truck. I think uh, you're probably right, Steve. I remember that was horrific. The poor yeah. thing survived an airplane, you know, smacked run over by a truck, and they counted it. They don't count it as yeah. a as a traffic fatality. So uh, anyway, um, yeah, I think you know, there's, you there's more of an equivalence, I think, with general aviation. You know, John Denver died in a, not a car crash, but crashed his airplane because he was the only pilot. So it's a little bit more of an equivalence there because you right. know, you're not. It, it's not a commercial thing, but. All right. Uh, thanks again for that. And um, let's try to be safer. And uh, again, I, I'm going to echo what Adam said. It's worth circling back and saying this. Thank God, uh, Stefan, for people like you, first responders, people who really save us from ourselves. Uh, thank you. Um, Randy and Adams, uh, you made a living doing this. And as a result of that living, you got to indulge your car uh, enthusiasm. But there's car brands, manufacturers, brands, they evolve. This is your world. We want to talk about this. Is a, we all want to talk about this. So uh, go get get to it, uh, Adams. This is a cool thing. I've got about 45 minutes straight. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Great. So pour your cup of coffee or your favorite. You know, I mean, you know, branding is one of those things in, in my little world uh, of, of marketing, which is really the ethical attraction and retention and referrals of a um, a targeted customer. And that little mouthful of what sounds like technicality. Did you say that again? <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> For real? Yeah, say it again, because I think it's important. The ethical attraction and retention and referrals garnered from a targeted prospect. And wow. Man, I've never a heard lot that defined. Words in there. That's excellent. Wow. I, I never heard it defined. I love that. 
Well, it's, you know, the, the attraction side is what a lot of people look at in marketing. They're like, oh, you know, we got to pull people in, pull people in. And what they don't realize is the people who are going out the back door, the people who go, wow, I'd never buy that car or that vehicle, that uh, piece of furniture, that whatever it is. Again, never go to that restaurant again, any of those things. But the retention, you know, everybody in every marketing department across the world knows that it costs seven times more to get a customer than to keep one. And so a lot of what happens within those numbers, that little metric, is that people realize keeping the customer is paramount. And, you know, once you get them in the door, yay, you know, you sell them something, but it's keeping them there and then having them to refer other people. Thus begins this customer experience that people would call branding. And the whole branding thing, there wasn't even a word called branding back in the day. I mean, people probably knew that it was a thing out there, but it really didn't become a thing until actually automotively speaking, and, I, and I'll try to make this brief, until 1990 when uh, Lexus and Infinity were launched. Nobody ever heard of branding. Nobody ever quantified it. Nobody ever tried no, to talk great about point. it. I never really thought about, I, I like that because there were, there were other vehicles, but when those two came out competing against each other, they were selling something more they were selling that emotional content associated with a brand and now that you think about it i never really thought of branding and lexus succeeded infinity did not in their branding attempts that oh, very man. astute well, point brands very but, astute know, but branding's always been there i mean it's been there but not the world uh you know mercedes engineered like no other car in the world and of course the ultimate driving machine yeah but those were i would have to say that that was branding that was a, that was more reputation associated whereas lexus and infinity when they hit the market they had it to create a brand yeah. with a huge effort of marketing so i get where this idea of branding then hits whereas these other people were just the mercedes-benz bmw were just cultivating what an identity so more so to speak Man, I, I, I mean, but both, both of you guys would be front of the class in a marketing seminar, I promise you, because that's exactly right. Um, Mercedes, BMW, and exactly. Sharper than the average tool. <laughs> <laughs> that's your you brand message to find. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you were several tools, my friend. <laughs> but, you, uh -huh. you know, that, the, the interesting thing you say about that is that's exactly right. You know, uh, 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 Lexus Infinity were trying to create, they were trying to penetrate a very established dinner party that at least at the dinner party they were trying to get into the front door of, not the side door, but the front door of, was the BMW Mercedes party. And those people had established, and like Steve mentioned, yeah, they had those, they were, they were slogan-esque. Those were the Mad Men era, sort of like a slogan, a campaign where, the branding world is what Seth Godin, who, if you look him up, G-O-D-I-N, he is like basically a marketing god in the pantheon of current day. He is still very much alive, very much active, very much influential. Uh, you've seen a lot of his campaigns, maybe without knowing it was him. But he said branding is a promise. That was his mm -hmm. summary. Branding is a promise, a promise by which you stand, a promise by which you attract people and keep people and all the things we just said. So in the world of the Lexus and Infinity with the branding, you know, you think about it at that time, uh, Lexus uh, discussed uh, that they used 24 karat gold plated contacts in their airbag sensors because they were milliseconds faster than the other contacts. Uh, they talked about the uh, how the woods were um, were were. Were, were matched in their veneers and stuff on you'd appreciate that as a woodworking hobbyist and they talked about um how they designed their cars aerodynamically to achieve a, a, a drag coefficient of less than 0 0.32 they went hyper technical they talked to david go ogilvy if you want to look him up as one of the copywriters who was informational based they made very dense copy and scripting promises to their would-be customer and people paid attention. At the same time, Infinity talked about rocks and trees. <laughs> yeah. I was like, WTF, man. What the exactly. I'm like, what the hell are they selling? I wish exactly. I wish Lexus would go back to 1990 because their slogan back then it it resonated completely. And it was the relentless pursuit of perfection. Perfection. That That's is beautiful. Yes. That's beautiful. That is money in every word. And man, that's okay. So that kind of summarized it. So at the same time, 
like once they established and launched, and we'll go on with our, our branding sort of summaries of, of different cars that have been chosen. Mercedes then became, we were here first and have been here longer. BMW became, we're the younger version of those above people. Volvo became the safety brand. Toyota became the reliable brand. Honda became the innovator brand. And GM became the brand of rebates and <laughs> wackily aspirational grill. Those That is a great summary. I love that. So there you go. Hey, I'm a Ford guy. What would you call Ford? You know, Ford was interesting because they had they had a, a huge footprint in Europe and they had a huge print, footprint in the U.S. So they were able to sort of lean on the shoulders of the more svelte and muscular Europeans. I think I think Ford looked like a far greater innovator than did Chrysler or GM. Far greater. They tried more things experience, uh, uh, experimentally uh, during the days that people were sort of trying to find their footing. They went out and bought Volvo and they bought Jaguar and they did all sorts of sort of breaking out of the box things to extend their brand identity. Now, those right. were not great experiments, but they were trying. I got one. GM how about this for how about this for Ford? Authentically American cars and trucks. Oh, Lo I, wow. I do like that. Yep. We, we 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 could have saved two minutes if you had given me that before the the, the show. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Well, um, one thing we have a list of ten brands that we want to go through. I have to say, um, that was beautiful. I I love everything you talked yeah. about, especially the idea of retaining. Because you think about attracting, you don't think about retaining customers. So, um, Adams, why don't you take us? Hey, Adam, Adams, Adams, yeah. Yeah, but so that yeah, you need to put. Can you put that in words? And I'm going to put that so that you know it's more than three syllables and a lot of words in there. And I I will never be able to remember <laughs> that. That's just I'm not. I, and you had some four syllable words, which is way past me. But I'm going to put that on the website that that what you talked about as one of your quote. I think that is that needs to be permanently on our web presence. That was just so well yeah. said. Uh, sure so you, we're going to go Bob, through man. We're going to go through uh, 10 manufacturers and talk. We're all going to kind of summarize their uh, brand message. Uh, Adam, this you is can like a us, Rorschach. This is a you can Rorschach. Take us through, me. You can take us through that. But how about this? Cars on call. Three old car guys having fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Three old car guys who think everybody wants to hear their opinion. Just like every other podcast in the world. We don't really yeah. care. We're having fun. We don't care. We're having fun. Yeah. <laughs> We're basically just not. letting the world eavesdrop on a conversation we'd have had anyway. And yeah. we're yeah, we're just letting our great, great, great grandchildren progeny have a recorded record of us. We may not be at the Smithsonian or the archives, but hey, we will have a presence somewhere. <laughs> we're not gonna be at the Smithsonian. All right, Adams, take us through it. <laughs> okay, uh you want to just rip down the brand? So, yeah, so do Rorschach, you name yeah, the you, brand. You go through the ten and give us your take and we'll we'll, oh, we'll okay. follow. Oh, well, how about okay. we okay? All right. Or do you want to? Uh, what I do want think, to Stephon? do one, two, three. So brand okay, one, two, three, brand one, two, three. Like it. Yes. Yeah. Brand, do three brands at a time. I'm no, sorry. So you do, so so you like say Tesla. Take. Yeah. You, then Steve-O goes and I go. Then you right. do the next brand. Steve-O goes, okay. I go. I like Fair that. enough. All right. Tesla. Uh, initially, my take on this. Like By the that, way, three three <laughs> old car guys having fun who haven't rehearsed. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. They just start going to rehearsal. <laughs> initially on Tesla, my take would have been uh, just basically wacky tobacco. But uh, today it is nerd tech for socially aware hipsters with money. <laughs> uh, mine is simple. Made battery electric vehicles cool. Mine is change the industry, the Apple ethos, an emotional connection to product, which I have coined Teslafication. Yeah, that's good. Nice. Okay, Cadillac, and and I and I'm giving a mi minor historical perspective. Early on, it would have been aspirational status and luxury, but today, due to the buyer demographic, it's Cadillac rhymes with cardiac. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> uh this is uh a nerdy fact but it needs to be said because they had their first downsizing uh in 1979 and the second in 1985 so mine is cadillac irrelevant since 1985 
<laughs> oh, oh man oh. and following on on that minus cadillac i, I thought the brand was escalade because uh, <laughs> it is because it is you know we're, we're not even three names <laughs> into this and i guarantee this this ought to be played to the marketing departments of all the people whether or not they disagree with this or not as yeah. the kids would say shots fired <laughs> yes all right porsche uh typically it's unchanging there's no historical reference because they've not changed it is currently surgical precision while smiling expensively. Uh, I had a uh, former sports car maker, now king of the automotive world. Hmm. And I have Alabama inbred in a great way. <laughs> the, the vehicle vehicles are all... The, the, hold on. The, what? Yeah, Alabama inbred in a great way. The vehicles are all cousins and siblings. Oh, they yeah. have genetically engineered the core driving essence across the entire line. What a phenomenal achievement. Really? Good point. That's good. Yep, yeah, really? that's true. <laughs> BMW, uh, this once august and proud creator of the sports sedan genre has tipped well into, this is my summary, ungainly tech, so techy, even we can't fix it. Wow. <laughs> All right. Mine is. Ultimate driving machine, uh, formerly ultimate driving machine, now cool soccer mom slash milf mobile. <laughs> oh, <laughs> mine is little little red riding hood has lost her way. Go mm. talk to Ferdinand Porsche. Oh, that's good. Yeah, and they have. All right, Renault. <laughs> I'm laughing already because I'm reading my answer. Go ahead, Adam. <laughs> I'm afraid. <laughs> Left, left failure. <laughs> oh. Oh, 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 that's funny. <laughs> All right, Steve. <laughs> uh, mine is, uh, I don't even know how many words this is, but it's, <laughs> it's, you can tell me how many words it is. It's fun. Renault, qu'est-ce que c'est? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Lord. Mine is Renault. Bring back Jack in the Box, Carlos Ghosn. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> Jack in the box, of course, he escaped Japan in a box. The escape artist in a box, yes. <laughs> is he, is he box. eligible to come back? Is he available? <laughs> he is he can't leave Lebanon, man. Yeah. He's an international criminal, but he can't leave Lebanon. Well, uh, Carlos, if you're out there, remember uh you you've got an open invitation as a guest on Cars on Call. Um yes. Toyota. And I'm just saying, like, if 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 Mount Fuji had a Rushmore, Toyota would be on it. Absolutely. Um, uh, with the inscription, we build things that will work longer and harder than your best efforts to break them. Oh, that one's good. That. Yeah. For me, it's similar. We'll never let you down. To me, it was more uh, Akko, hats off, Shapa Bada, Akko, Toyota. The only CEO that has reached down and found a pair to just say <laughs> no to drinking the EV Kool Aid, and I'll bet his cars. I'll bet his cars all have ball coolers because he's got a pair. <laughs> he is. They, they are the guy. We're, you know, this will be in the future. We'll be talking about that 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 prediction and that that strategy of theirs. Yep. Okay, Nissan. Uh, they, they to, to me, they were once a contender for the big three of Japanese car makers, and now they're relegated to imitations playing catch up in the enticement of low payments. Um, to me, they are the Oldsmobile of 1990. Uh, the quote is um, trying to be so many things at once that they've contented themselves to be nothing to most of them. Yeah, I was uh, somewhat more brief. Japanese me Japanese mediocrity. I was even briefer. Nissan starts with uh, next manufacturer, please. <laughs> and for next, I, I just, I, I had nothing, nothing came to mind. Uh, yeah. All right. Next. <laughs> next. Buddy. And see, that's a summary too. There's nothing yeah. to them. There's nothing to them. All right. Yeah. Hyundai, true. Hyundai to me is kind of like the, uh, the, 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 even though it's not their own country's mythology, I think they're almost like the, the Godzilla. Uh, because they they were hopeless in this country, and look what they've done. They they were sent back to Korea to re-engineer themselves. Now they've re-emerged and are fabulous. 
Hyundai to me is frugality goes stylish mainstream. Oh, wow. Sweet. Uh, Korean mediocrity, but getting a lot better all the time. Me was Hyundai. Everyone else, you better watch out. You're going to be pouting. They are on a roll. They're yeah. steamrolling. True. More than once, I have my head turned on the road and go, wow, that was a Hyundai. Yes. Good looking vehicle. All right. Volvo. That was an interesting one. You know, they once stood almost entirely, as I mentioned, for, for, for safety. And they stuck there and that was their brand, et cetera. But uh, then the Ford years, et cetera. And now under Geely Holdings, a Chinese company, this is what I hope it becomes. Volvo evolving without dissolving. Oh, <laughs> that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just had safety and Scandinavian design. Open parentheses. Not bad for a Chinese company. Close parentheses. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've all got a variation of the same thing i'm like yeah. volvo thank you geely for transitioning from boring safety to scandinavian chic yeah cool. and as long as they can maintain that coolness that scandinavian which is always you know it's kind of like bajas and the tt it's a design ethic that clearly there is a appeal to that that if they got to keep that so yeah last last is Rivian, then we go on to 10 vehicles that are cool and 10 that are not cool. And that's going to be fun. But Rivian. Rivian. Uh, I think they're handsome, innovative, timely, but potentially underfunded and maybe overlooked. Uh, my summary is the Fisker of trucks. Oh. 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 Hey, now. <laughs> hey, now. <laughs> hey, now. Because <laughs> I said uh, uh, that Volvo was uh, cool Scandinavian design uh, plus safety. Rivian is cool American design with range anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. I was thinking more uh, uh, the hick, hip, hick, hit. Let me start over again. Easy for you to say. <laughs> Easy. Yeah. It's like, you need geez. somebody to hit you on the back or hip, hick, hit. Oh, hick, 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 hiccuping their way to what's expected for an EV truck and SUV. And if they succeed, uh, like I finally got it spit, if they finally can spit it out, like I had difficulty, they will corner that market. But they plot it. No, and now I see why you use that word hiccuping exactly because it seems like they get a little bit ahead in the news and they fall behind. They they do have the charger contract, then they don't have the charger contract. They're right. going to get the EV credits, then they're not. Gonna. Yes, you're right. It is. It's it's a stutter start. They don't have any momentum. Right. Yeah. They're like That's... Alabama football this year, but we'll move on. <laughs> That's true. Well, I guess this we can't go around in circles because we are all gonna we have different cars. Uh, but uh Adams, uh, why don't you start us with I guess you know what we can do is we can just go cool car, cool car, cool car around the bend, and then we'll we'll go one, two, three, uh, you know, through our cool cars. So you'll do car, cool car number one, Adams, then I'll go then Stefan. And, I, and you expect me to do screen sharing with pictures as we yes. go one, two, three. <laughs> oh, Jesus, help me. <laughs> Lord, Lord. Oh, oh, my God. Okay. Since uh, Listeners, do you realize what they're asking me to do? <laughs> <laughs> We're forcing Steph to become even more ADD. This is like, this well, is I'm how just, to do it. I'm like dying to know which cars you guys are think are cool and uncool. Because there, there's a lot of meat out there. I, I, I'm like dying to see your guys' list of Adam. Well, I tell you, 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 you know, the, the the good thing about this segment is I'm dying to hear your guys' list. And since I've talked a little bit more on this particular episode than most, my list is going to be shorter on. Okay. Cover. So right. here's the, to me the coolest that took the coolest new car that's come out. It's from a brand that we've talked about. It's like, oh my gosh, you know, the patients on life support. You know, are they still breathing over there? I see a little uh, bit of heartbeat. I gotta find this. I and gotta this find is this. a car with such a fantastic history, racing history, an incredible pedigree. Uh, Enzo Ferrari once worked there. That ought to be good enough. Mm. The Alpha 33 Stradale. Uh, uh, which I just have no idea what that is. That's a new uh, car. For, that's, a, it, that's a new car for sale today? It's, it's a new car for sale, but you can't get it anymore. You know, Alpha undershot. You know, they not only finally come out with a fantastic car. And, Steph, I sent you one in sort of a late email. They yeah. come out with a fantastic car based uh, more or less around the uh, the Maserati MC20, which, you know, was was sort of lauded to become the, the, the new Dino. You know, they've been talking about the new Dino for years. 
Well, alpha stylists are just hitting the right Chianti because this <laughs> are yeah. <laughs> it looks right Chianti. incredible. And the, the, they can draw a car. They, the, they, is it know, for sale in the U.S.? There it is. Can you buy this in the U.S.? If you put your name on the list and we're healed enough. All right. Yeah. Hey, if you're on Instagram, follow cool. a guy called Metal Shaping Guy. This He's up in Canada. He built a Cobra, built a buck, handmade the aluminum body on a Cobra. He is doing one of these in his garage. Get Metal at- Shaping Guy on right, Instagram. Well, he, he's so cool. If you can't see this, if you're just listening on a podcast, it's beautiful. It's spectacularly beautiful. It's it looks a lot like a Ferrari, but it's not. It's beautiful. All right. That's pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to go much more uh, ordinary, but this is not Chianti. This is Van Ordinaire. <laughs> and uh and it's it kind of it's you know stefan you basically said this earlier it's the cadillac escalade and the cadillac brand is worthless i think but the escalade has tons of street cred it's not just for soccer moms with money uh rappers like it i like it uh, every time i drive on i enjoy it the cadillac escalade is cool now, you, don't need, you don't need a picture of that so we can go on to yeah, no, yeah, 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 right no one that. we all know what it looks like I like to ride in one. I just don't want to be seen in one. I've ridden in them. I love it. I, I don't want to be seen in it, though. Uh, I could own one. Oh. <laughs> I, I would only ride in the back with heavy tent. <laughs> yeah. All right, Stefan, go ahead. Oh, is it my turn? All right. Yeah. So, uh, number one, cool car for tw- um, coming up here. Oh, that's not that's not the picture. Here, Good sorry. pick, Steph. I didn't see you. <laughs> that ah, there we go. This is the one I want. Mustang Dark Horse, man. There you there go. You go. It is oh, so cool. Great. It is, you know, GM's bailing out of the V8s. Everybody's going electric. Dodge has quit making their their cars, their V8s. Ford said, "Nope, we're gonna we're coming out again with another hot Mustang and the Dark Horse." They didn't go to the past to do a Mach One or a Bullet, or um, so I I love what they've done. They're resurrecting, um, creating a new name based on the old you know based on a v8 and they're not giving up so that's to me is just too cool the whole thing i think that's a terrific pick and it's a, just count that as one of mine that that's that's that okay. everything from the look to the name to well, the concept love it and then i'm gonna follow on with the gtd the mustang gtd because once again this is they're not giving up on the internal combustion engine so my number two was the mustang gtd just two kudos to ford i know um gm's got the c7 or the ZR1 Corvette coming out. Um, so GM is still doing it with the Corvette. I'm just not a GM fan. If I was a GM fan, I would have the Corvettes here, which I think I'll give them honorary mention for doing what they're doing as cool in this age of everything's got to be electric. I I would not I do not have the Corvette down because I, I don't like that they went mid-engine and that took the cool yeah. away from me because they're just it's just another McLaren or something. But uh, just like Adams, I had the Mustang down. I had actually the Mustang 5.0, but what I said about the Mustang yeah. was loud, proud, and unafraid, and um, it's cool. <laughs> oh yeah, yep, very well said. Sorry, right, Adams. On, on the cool side, <laughs> That's you know, you know, Adams. this <laughs> I, I actually do have one. On the cool side, this I, I guarantee I'm going to get a uh, booze uh, galore on this one for a new vehicle. If I had a, to pick a family ride that I was going to own and drive and insure and have to maintain and live with the new Toyota Land Cruiser. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I can see it, but I don't I'll know do about it. cool. Um, I'm okay with it. I'm okay. I'm okay with I it. Like I mean, it. I think it's a great choice. I just don't know if it's cool. Like I, I described thinking of cool, but Hey, I, th- I think what's cool about it is its approachability, its livability, its dependability. If I if I wanted to go to Colorado tomorrow and take a road trip, I think it would be pretty darn cool if I didn't have to think about whether I'd make it. I think, you know, our our past guest, uh, Bob Ruppel, I think if you were to, I haven't seen a tricked out cruiser like they've done at the Bronco. I think if, if you were to have some kind of a tricked out factory package, some Mickey no. Thompson's on there, something bigger. I'd be, oh, hell yeah. But if it's the pictures I've seen, it's like, oh, hell no. That ain't cool. 
but I think it's got the potential. I look forward to seeing those pictures. All right. So I'm going to follow up on that because I, I'm, I'm skipping the line here in my list. And uh, I actually, oh, you... I, I'm okay with the Land Cruiser because yeah. uh, the Land Cruiser, you guys, I'm sure are going to think is cooler than the Lexus LX600. And, and that is the real Land Cruiser, by the way. The Land Cruiser went away and the Land Cruiser is actually the LX600. It's the Lexus version. And it's this big tank that never breaks down. I've had two LXs. They are completely dependable, completely safe. I love everything about them. And I think they look good, and I think they're cool. So there. <laughs> there. <laughs> I know they're probably not. Throw it down. <laughs> no, I like it. You know I like it. I have to agree with you. All right. All right so uh, my so turn. Uh, yeah. All right. So my turn here. I'm going to get a screen share. I think I got it. The uh, Rivian R1T. Whoa. Um, yeah, I think so. Here we are with a really cool looking SUV. Um, and it's got a lot of cool features. It really is pure electric. It's this is an Apple version. This is the first Apple version. I do like the Onyx 5, um, which I also have on my list as a smaller SUV, but for larger SUV, I think this Rivian is really cool, and I really hope they make it because. They're making vehicles that Tesla doesn't, which is smart from a marketing standpoint, but they're Tesla-fied vehicles, meaning this is like an Apple product where you feel an emotional connection to this vehicle. And I've driven the Rivian truck, fabulous drive. All right. Wow. Okay. Uh, Adams. I like that. Um, I don't I think would, it's cool. Uh, I'm just going to say for the record, I don't think it's cool. Anyway, keep going. Okay. You know what? I, 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 I think I think it sets a you know a a new level of of acceptable cool in the electric world. I kind of like that that it's not a Tesla. You know, I mean, I, I, if it's going to be electric, I like that. Um, let's see oh. on, on my cool list. If if I were going to go out and order a new sports okay. car, okay, hold on, stop. Let me let me let me pull it up. Let me. I just got the email. Hold on, here it is. Uh, boom, bam. All right, I got a picture up. There we go. There you go. Yep. The Lotus Emira. Oh, and, you know, yeah, it's good choice. Excellent you know, choice. Lotus has had such a, you know, dark period. You know, Stefan mentioned the <laughs> hiccups. <laughs> and this is a company oh, that was founded in racing. Colin Chapman didn't even really want to sell a car. And lo and behold, he started selling a few and they were spindly and fragile and all that stuff. And they just never could quite get their reliability act together. This is a car that really promises to undo. Of course, it's got the, the Toyota uh, V6 in the middle. Yay, Toyota. And look at that thing. It's got tons of uh, high-tech aero and air management. And they're going to sell every single one they make. I've got a friend of mine who knows more about racing technology. He is on the, uh, the, the Honda team. Uh, uh, up, up, up in the office of the Honda team, and he understands uh, telemetry and all the computer crazy stuff. He just ordered one. Going to be two years before he gets it. Wow, kind of like there. my Cobra. <laughs> two years. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. And you know this car starts at about ninety grand, which is not you know really? uh, sofa cushion, cushion money, but it'll be one ten, one fifteen by the time he gets it here. But it'll compete with cars fifty percent more than that. Nice. I, I am skeptical of how it sells. I think part of being cool is you don't have to explain what it is. And if you have one of these, you have to explain exactly what it is because no one's going to know what it is. Uh, <laughs> but um, we're car guys. We all know it's cool. Uh, that's, that's speaking from a guy who lives in Idaho, that makes perfectly sense. It's a potato. <laughs> what do you think it is? It's a potato. It's a potato. Yeah. <laughs> a potato. It's a, what did it's you a, think it was, you fool? <laughs> yeah. It's a very, very fast potato. So um, I'm going to say too because we're I don't want to we we're kind of running a little bit on time for this part we want to get to not cool so I'm just going to say two really cool there's not there's no discussion Audi RS6 BMW M2 let's move on all right so I'll do, I'll finish up my cool they're cool uh, wait 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 what was, was, uh, was Steve what, was, Steve was two? rushing us here and we're having no, a good no, time. Well, we're running a little short on time but what, but, what did but, Potato Head say? what did Mr Potato Head say there, there's nothing to talk about <laughs> Audi RS6 it's cool. BMW yes. M2, it's cool. We can move on. Okay. You're right. All right I'll move cool. on to my cool. I'll move on to my cool. Um, here we go. 
I say um, hop back to those picks. Oh, uh, lucid wow. air, lucid oh. air, totally cool. I My next pick, him. Lambo Urus. Next pick, Audi Etron GT. And then I finished my top 10 with, oh, I can't get it to come up, with this one right here. I just think the Range Rover, the new Range Rover is so cool. Um, I love the design. So that, that rounds out my top 10 cool. All right. I nice. did have the Porsche ST in there too. but You guys killed. I I, I agree with, with, with all the cools. Absolutely. Every single one of them. Yeah, I was I trying have... to, I t- I'll tell you one minor opposition I would take. Am I the only guy on this podcast who loves that GM finally put a mid-engine Corvette out on the market? Am I the, the only one? Yes. You're the yes. Only one. <laughs> yes. Well, I just wanted to tell you, I don't know how to break this to you. I'm right. Okay. Here's the, here's the deal mm. for me, just on the core briefly. If, you know, they wanted to get golf clubs in that damn thing. If they had skipped that whole golf club mentality, the eight-year-old guy driving a Corvette to go play golf, and they would have shortened that car, not made it so wide, screw the golf clubs, it would have been a great design. But yes. the, the the proportions are off because of the freaking golf club thing. Yes. I don't disagree. Yeah. The, the back is a mess. We, we we need to talk about that. We need to have a design, another design episode. The, the Porsche 911 is on my list, and I and Stefan just said 911 ST, so that's two of us. And Adams, I know you, you're going to be number three. Yes. What Marga I would say GTS. is the 911 just turned 60 years old. We talked about it last week. The 911 has always been rear engine. The Corvette has always been front engine until it wasn't. To me, that ruins the cool. Yeah. If they'd acted on their impulse in 1971, we wouldn't even be talking about it. Well, I guess you're right. Uh, rounded out, I had the Tesla Model Y. Sorry, guys. Uh, and the Mazda Miata. And uh, Stefan, cover your ears, Toyota 4Runner. So, uh, <laughs> There's nothing cool about that. Come on, and dude. Just, and, yeah, How, go what ahead. the hell? So, so what's wrong with cool, you? Not cool is more fun. So, Adams, <laughs> what's not cool? What is not cool? I'll tell you what's not cool. Here, is, I, give me. I think I got. I think I got this one. All right, go ahead. A Jeep Renegade. It just makes yes. me. It just makes <laughs> yeah. me mad when I see them. Dude, okay, hold on a second here. <laughs> I want to kick them in the door. Dude, 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 dude. That dude, is dude, on dude. my list, man. Cool. I've got to find it. Uh, here it's we go, an share. insult to the name Jeep. There it is. A Fiat yeah, 500 yeah. X. Yeah. Oh my God. How awful. Oh, cover what your is- eyes. Cover your eyes. I, I I I read earlier today, and this is not a joke. A cow is more aerodynamic than that automobile. <laughs> true. True. I saw well, it on TikTok. If you can't believe TikTok, who can you believe? All right. Well, let me follow on to you, Adam, because I got my screen sharing pulled. Here's here's my next pick, okay? The yes. Honda Fit, because it's a shitbox, because you are fitting to be <laughs> killed driving this thing. Driving these little shitboxes is like going to gunfight with a knife. With the way I talked about statistics, the SUVs, pickup trucks, Please, please don't put your children in this. Don't get your wife one of these. Just get something bigger than these little micro cars, little things driving around if it's your only vehicle. But it also, I passed on interstate today. It is just an ugly ass vehicle. All right, that's enough for me. Yeah. Evo. That's that's great. Uh, On my cool list, I had the Mercedes S-Class. On my not cool list, I had the Mercedes EQS. And I don't care if it's a sedan or SUV. Uh, Here's my brand. Uh, here's my brand statement for the EQS. Is that a Hyundai? <laughs> it's terrible. The design has no presence. I hate it. It's uncool. I hate it. Yeah. Wait a minute. Okay. I think, I, I think, um, oh my God. I mean, you guys are, I sent you a picture, but if you I know you up, did. I know you did. It's fine I'm if you don't to, put I'm it up. I hate to... it. I don't want to see it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> put Steven in a bad mood there. I, I've, I've got I've got a not cool that you guys might disagree with, and it's and it's it making because right. we. There it is. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, Adam. But you're you're it's, not it's, cool. It's filtered I, out. Did, did did Steve filter it out so we wouldn't have to look at it? All right. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. So I think I've got your next one. Maybe not cool. Well, it it relates to that one actually. And yeah. It's what it, it's what it stands for. The Mercedes yeah. G wagon. Yeah. Not cool. Not cool. It's cool. No, it's not cool. It's not cool. Why? We need to send you to cool school. That's not cool. 
<laughs> it's just I, I, I think it's 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 what a little bit we could say that happened with the Corvette. The Corvette is maybe not a bad car on paper. It's the people who were Corvette people of many decades of doing it have made it sort of a car you don't want to associate with as much. That's what happened to this car. It just sort of became, you know, the the rich lady or posing dudes toy as if they're really going to go jumping sand dunes and they're not i just don't like it it's a super expensive pretender off-roader could be capable but it's really just an expensive version of something that's never going to do that yeah i'm getting a ford raptor if i'd ever get one of these indeed yeah, i i've driven it and i have to say i 100 percent agree with everything you just said and I don't care. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I have no defense. I hate myself for loving you, right? You know that song? Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So let me uh, let me jump over here. I do have some pictures. Okay. I hate this whole category. Oh, yes. Of uh, this whole boom. category of taking a big fat ass SUV, throwing your M badge, your AMG badge, whatever badge you want on it. You know, the, we got the Mercedes-Benz AMG GL 63 S Coupe here. Give me the ugliest damn thing I've ever seen. And then Who started you've got, this trend. I'm, I mean, I don't, I, the X6, BMW X6. X6. And then look at this thing. This is, listen, this is the BMW XM label red. This is like this. It's got gigantic significant mus- sinus problems. Oh my God. It's just this whole genre of vehicle. This, I hate them all. Um, oh, Get that car some Afrin. <laughs> yeah it's uh it's it's a tasteful bmw minus all of the taste taste <laughs> yeah it's <laughs> awful oh, God, i hate it it's yeah and i agree the the x6 started this big high sedan they took an x5 and they made it into a sedan it's like and then they sold and then the, the, the uh, mercedes did the same thing there was an do you guys remember the acura zdx it was the same oh thing. yes that was awful. Actually, it was like the cross no. tour, the Honda cross tour, and the ZDX. It was like the, the same thing. Cross tour. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The so, Honda cross dresser. Yeah. They are <laughs> yeah, all. Terrible. They're all uh, morally wrong and bad, and that's it. So, uh, all right. I, I, you know, I, I kind of think the Lexus LX is cool. I may be the only one. The Lexus LS is no longer cool. In 1990, it was the coolest. Oh car. yeah, you're right. Yeah, and now yeah. it's the definition of uncool. Yes, I have I to agree. agree. They, they lost their lead, you know. You know, and and none of it has anything to do with reliability or fit and finish or the engineering expertise. It's just they lost their way, and and their 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 message got I don't know shoved. What what is what is this right. whole spindle grill thing has got to stop. Hey, Steve, remember we were at Pebble Beach and this is years ago. Um, and we they had the new Lexus, and we're like, Oh, this car is so cool, it's aspirational. And then all of a sudden, it became totally uncool. My buddy had several of these, now he drives an S class. Um, but yeah, they they were the epitome of, I mean, they were right up there with an S class. Brands, yeah. brands evolve, right? Yes, yeah. yeah. all right, Adams. Okay, I've got one, one, one more un, uncool, and and uh, th- this will be my last uncool. And I hate to say it, but it's brand wide. Lamborghini. Oh, I had the Urus on my list. <laughs> oh, it just they, <laughs> that's they, cool. They, uh, it's just like the this flamboyant acid dropping stripper, and they're just <laughs> they're they're trying to outdo each previous iteration into something way more flamboyant and if they would just get back to saying you know we've got great engineering we've got excellent stylists let's just make a car that's mildly subdued you know that doesn't look like you're tripping i don't know i think the whole brand and now look at the look at their target market and and and, you know i I won't make any more comments just look at look at what, what what they've done to their brand yeah, if uh, if the Toyota Century is uh, understated Tokyo, uh, Lamborghini Lamborghini is in your face Miami. There you go, bingo, nicely said. So I'm gonna I'm <laughs> gonna go quickly. Through oh, a couple. Go there ahead. we go. I picked yeah. one for you, Steve, out of your pictures. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a couple I can go through quickly. Ford Bronco Sport. Uh, uh, this 
here's here's my one line on this should have been escape sport yes i agree that would be it's more a, accurate truth in that escape. yeah yeah it's terrible and then an escape uh, yeah it's terrible another these are family vehicles that are popular the bronco sport is is uncool the bmw x bmw x5 used to be cool it's not cool and the audi q5 used to be cool and then it's not cool those right. are family vehicles that are not cool yeah yeah that's yep. Devon. All right, so my uncool list, I'm just going to uh, – I had the Buick Encore, but anything Buick, mm -hmm. I'll just change that. And then I wanted to finish with, um, of course, the safety aspect, the Hummer EV. Okay, this is so uncool. It's yeah. a 1,000 horsepower. It weighs 9,000 pounds. It does 0 to 60 in 3.3. This thing is 007 on wheels, licensed to kill. Yeah, I think that is. It, I think it is completely outrageous. And after the what I talked about on my safety, our roads, pedestrian deaths, passenger vehicle deaths, this thing is the Antichrist on wheels. It is. <laughs> awful. Uh, it is. It is the Antichrist on wheels. It's and awful. <laughs> Steph, oh. hit me with the facts again. It weighs what and does zero to 60 and what? 9,000 pounds coming at you at 3.3 seconds and zero to 60. Wait a minute. You mean so, 9,666 nine pounds? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's got uh, it Steve, uh, very stuff. good. Yes. I mean, you know, they should put the, like the BMW, they should put the red all over this thing because it's the devil coming at you, man. He's going to take your soul. He's going to take right. your soul. And, and, and lest we forget, it will also <laughs> go sideways as if, as if it weren't a killer enough. Yeah. yeah It'll like crab it walk over your ass. Put it in crab walk mode. All right. You guys go through the rest of your uh, uncool and then we'll wrap it up. I'll, I'll do mine and then we'll wrap it up. I'm going to end up. I ended that. I'm just going to finish with that for me. All right. Uh, I've just got a couple really quickies. Uh, Stefan, you said Lucid Air was cool. I said uncool. Should have been an SUV. Uh, Should have been cooler looking. Uh, I don't like the design. Uh, but that's debatable. Maserati Ghibli, uh, mm. Dennis, oh. Dennis's yeah. wife, Dennis's wife's lease. And then um, it's just a terrible car. It's embarrassing. It's an embarrassment to the name uh, Adams. Yeah. And then I put Subaru WRX. It used to be so cool. It's now civilized and it has a fucking CVT if you don't get the <laughs> manual. And there's no STI. Uh, I used to love this car and I'm, I'm just disgusted. So that's uncool. There you go. We're done. That's super good. You just summarized every misstep Subaru made in a row on that yeah. car. They had it and they lost it. All right. We're over time, but who cares? We had a ton who cares? of fun. That was we too much great fun, time. dude. This is great. <laughs> nah. This was fun. It was really great. So, Stefan, to wrap us up. All right, listeners, like, subscribe. And then I hear apparently on YouTube, you're supposed to hit the bell, whatever that means. I don't know anything about it. We're just three old guys that like to talk about cars, but uh, just hit um, the bell. Just hit the bell, whatever that means. And uh, you got a fun pick, send us in. Maybe you'll make prime time, just just like um, our great guest, Miss uh, Mary Parsons, my one of my big fans. See you guys next week.